Hi, everybody. It's Jeremy Fricke, Education Director at TriFaith Initiative. I just wanted to add a little bit to our previous program, which if you haven't already watched, uh, go to the link attached. Uh, we talk a lot about Gnosticism in particular in early Christianity. Now, I wanted to give an opportunity to sort of recap some of what we talked about, in part because we had some technical difficulties near the end and uh, lost a little bit of time. So, so I would like to, um, to sort of bring it all together and remind everybody, why are we even talking about this in the first place? Yeah. So uh, firstly, um, if you remember our class, uh, started with some context of early Christianity, uh, particularly Jewish movements and Greco-Roman movements at the time, and how they may have influenced uh, Christianity broadly, as well as uh, what we might call Gnostic Christianity in particular. Now, I also want to remind that, that we brought this up, but I don't know that we spent enough time on it, that Gnostic Christianity is not one thing. Um, it was a term applied to the vast majority of movements that were not considered orthodox. Now, I talked about some of the sort of stereotypical beliefs of Gnostics that were adopted by a variety of different groups, but I wanna reiterate that not everyone believes the same thing. Um, they would not have identified each other necessarily as part of a particular subgroup of Christianity, they, they probably would have identified each other as some level of Christians, but not, um, not splitting it up. You know, we, we see these wide ranging beliefs, but, um, but naming the sects that they are a part of um, was mostly done by the outside. So even ranging from, you know, the Gospel of Thomas, where we have many sayings of Jesus who, um, who, who seems to be saying a lot of things that are very similar to the Gospels, to the, uh, the controversial cosmology that I talk about, which probably wasn't adopted by all Gnostic Christians by any means. Um, we, we have this wide range of people who believe things very similar to what we find traditional and other things that are really, we would still find pretty heretical today. Now, why are we talking about this wide range? It's, it's to think about today, okay? So when we engage with people of different religious backgrounds, we have really in some ways three core groups that we talk to. Firstly, we talk to people who we find to be very similar to us. Um, this may be the same religious group or it may be a different religious group that we, uh, we really um, understand and empathize with. Uh, number two is someone who's very different from us. This may be, for example, uh, Christians with Hindus or uh, Muslims with Buddhists. You know, these, these things are, uh, we can find a lot of similarities, but we also know that there are a lot of differences as well. Um, sometimes these relationships are not as difficult because we aren't arguing about our own tradition to some extent. Um, and which brings us to that third group, which is what Gnosticism brings up for us to talk about. And that is the internal diversity to our traditions. The Gnostic ideas that I brought up, some of them can be easily adopted. Um, and, and in some ways, you know, people should look at these traditions and say, you know, is there value here? Are there things that, um, that I can learn from them? Um, but also these more controversial points, which, which strike to some extent at the core of what we believe, um, these, e even though they aren't that much different at the end of the day, the, the controversial points may be quite different, but the vast majority of the rest are very similar. You know, Gnostics believed in Jesus. They believed in some level of crucifixion. They believed in uh, revealed books and and they believed in prophets and um, you know they they believed in uh, to some extent a common history uh, connecting all the way back to Adam and Eve this in some ways is very um, 
is probably the most difficult. You know, this this idea that that someone uh, holds many of the same ideas, but holds a couple things that are tremendously different. Those feel the most threatening to us. Um, we talked a little bit about that earlier in the class uh, when we talked about the narcissism of small differences that uh, Mr. Freud brings up, and I encourage you to revisit that. But I'll I'll kind of give a, a short recap of that as well, which is that these groups and these people, individuals who have either geographic proximity, as in they are our neighbors, or they have ideological proximity, as in they have many, many shared beliefs, often tend to create the most conflict mm -hmm. because they challenge who, are, who we are, our own identities. Um, it, it makes us question to some extent, ourselves and our own place in the world when when people so close have a few points of difference that are tremendously different. I, I don't have all the answers, um, but I think it is important for every one of us to think about how these small differences um, are something that we not not just need to overcome you know i, I don't want to say let's let's figure out what makes these differences common um i i'd rather us bring into the idea that these small differences actually are very able to be very beautiful and actually able to help us to define what we believe um, and understand others because we are able to give the room needed for someone to be different those differences allow us to see the world um, in a way that that we have a particular perspective and the faiths that we are a part of have a particular perspective. And there's nothing that has to be sacrificed for that to be able to uh, respect and um, understand people who are uh, different from us. Um, and in a final note, um, I want to also mention that, and this is a particular point, um, with the controversial cosmology where there's multiple gods and the basically the God of Abraham is lesser than the true God. Um, this may have been, at least in many cases, more of a a theological puzzle, if you will. It's a way to say that one God is bigger than the one that we imagine. Um, and this is something that most Abrahamic traditions believe today, you know, that, that God isn't as anthropomorphic, uh, as in not as human-like. Um, God is ungendered. Um, God is the God of all to some extent. Um, those are ideas that, that get solidified in some of the controversial cosmology that um, that let us sort of think about it in a different way. Now, of course, it is highly controversial even today, but um, there are a lot of ways to understand others and, um, and to understand ourselves in the context of others. So I hope that you enjoyed the program. And I hope that you enjoyed this recap. Um, I hope to see you all at the next Abraham's Whiteboard on the Mughal Empire. Thank you very much.